Thank you for staying with us. You're still on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And now it's time for our second hot topic. President Tinubu has unveiled bold vision for greener Nigeria at COP28. So as we know, um, President Tinubu and about 1,411 delegates were present at COP28. And now he has unveiled a bold vision for Nigeria. I have with me Dr. Ambrose Ibokwe, the Chairman Guild of Public Affairs and Analyst of Nigeria in the Good Chapter. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Ibokwe. Ibokwe. Oh, Thank you. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for joining us, sir. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, great. Good to be here. Thank you. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Um, the president has unveiled a bold vision for greener Nigeria. And in all of this, he was talking about ending gas flaring as well as rolling out some buses. Um, what do you think of all of this? Um. I have some extreme views about uh, these talks about climate change, mm. uh, carbon emissions, carbon credits, greenhouse talk, you know. Uh, for me, uh, they are not uh, something that Nigeria should even participate in at all. Uh, they are all cliches and narratives from the West to try to stifle us from using our natural resources to uh, grow industries and to grow our economy. Uh, for 500 centuries or so, uh, Europe uh, has been using uh, uh, fossil fuel uh, to develop their industries, the automobile industry, the steel plants, uh, the pharmaceuticals, all the industry you can think of today. They have used uh, uh, the mining and exploitation of uh, uh, natural resources of different countries, even in Africa. Uh, they were used in plantations. Our slaves were from Africa were used in uh, plantations. Uh, our coal was used, transported from Enugu and other places to uh, Europe to be used for the industries. And then when the exploitation of crude oil started, they used it again. And they've been using it. And then they used it to develop their countries uh, for 500 years. And then all of a sudden, they come and have the audacity to tell us that, oh, this oil, this, uh, why we are trying to develop our own now, they say, oh, the, the earth green layer is almost gone. There's too much of carbon emission. You have to cut down. Don't do this. I, I think the third world countries should be more um, circumspect to the fact that these uh, Kyoto, uh, Kyoto Protocol, COP28 conferences and all those things are not for good for Africa and other developing uh, uh, continents or countries. Um, there are you know, narratives pushed by the West who have created uh, some alternative energy and they're trying to force it down the throat of uh, of uh, developing countries uh, so that they can buy their expensive alternative uh, energy uh, and then uh, you know make more profit from it it, it has no way uh, that can tell us that and then uh, unfortunately uh, they push the scientific uh, uh, you know knowledge narrative by publishing in journals by the research they have done so and um, over the years we have found out that some researchers were actually doctors to favor economic growth of europe so for african leaders what do we really want we want industrialization we want economic growth and we cannot be part of a conference that says we should not use our crude oil we should not use our gas we should not use our coal these things we should not be part of them so being part of them already negates our economic uh, growth i think what uh Tinubu said in terms of glass flaring is okay now who flares the gas the oil exploitation in nigeria has been done and all over Africa and in most places of the world has actually been done by these European companies that are telling us that there's too much of a uh, of uh, uh, gas emission of uh, carbon emission and who are the biggest uh, exploiters of uh, crude oil and uh, the fossil fuel in the world we talk of mobile mobile is an American company we talk of Chevron Chevron is an American company we talk of total is a French company. We talk of Eddie, it's an Italian company. We talk of Shell, it's, it's a British company. Then other places like gas bomb of Russia. And so Europe has been the most pollutants of the world. So what are they telling us? So my dear president should be talking about if we are not flaring the gas, are we converting the gas? Nobody should tell us not to use the gas. We should convert the gas to be able to use it for other things. That is the only way I can align mm. with what the president has said. But buying electric cars, saying, uh, pledging that you buy electric cars from Europe, electric cars that you are not producing, what are you going to do with your fuel? 
I know the paradoxical thing about all this talk is that why you and America, United States of America are telling us to cut on this, cut on that. The major, the major use of fuel is still by these countries, by fossil fuel. Okay. Remember what happened last year? Why Russia was having issues with you and refused to supply them gas? What did Germany do? Germany, with, with, with all the alternative energy, whatever they call clean, I don't know what is clean about the energy. There's nothing like clean energy. Mm. All energy have their own, uh, uh, you know, have their own uh, downside. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so there's nothing like clean. There's no energy that is clean. Uh, let us stop deceiving us with all these uh, okay. technical rhetoric. Okay. Now, Germany, who is pushing for that narrative? Do you know that Germany used coal plants? Coal, coal, used coal last year to power their homes for, or for to heat their home systems. So what are we talking about? All right, so... Africanly, are you saying that Nigeria should, should shut coffee, out? Wake up. So you talked about 500 years ago that um, Europeans have used all of this, but could it be that they are more enlightened now and we still need to save our planet? And if, if, you're, if you're saying that Nigeria should shut out, you know, everything that we're being told, what does that do to the planet? I only said 500 years ago. I said they started 500 years ago. They are still doing it. I just told you about how the major polluters of the world are the major companies owned by, by these uh, by European countries and uh, the United States. So you use the word so polluting. They are still involved. They are still involved. They are still involved in it. So we should tell the rest of the world like what China is doing. I like China and India. China, the, the east, uh, the, the west is actually China is polluting the world and the world is endangered. China said, "Let us develop our our, our own uh, our own industries." The response of India was that. Oh, fine. When we pollute the world up to the point that you, Europeans, polluted the world, then maybe we can stop. But you cannot tell me that the world is in danger. And you have, and you have, you have, you have uh, you know, used, you were the one that put the world in danger. Then you told me to stop so that the world, danger of the world. If we perish in the danger, let us all perish. After all, civilizations uh, perish. So you should not tell us about, I don't even agree with them, that we are in danger. Because what is the carbon emission from Nigeria? How many industries does, does, uh, does Nigeria uh, have? How many industries are, are in Africa? The major polluters of these industries are in Europe. They are the ones still depleting. Then they come to us and sell us narrative, and they are still doing the opposite. So what do I, what African leaders go there to do? Nigeria go where to see a large delegation that I don't know where they came from. To do what? What is the green energy? What are we using our hydro? Are we finishing using our hydro energy? Are we using finishing using our gas to power our uh, uh, our uh, energy needs? Are, are you suggesting? Are you like suggesting? Hydro, like in anywhere, there's a lot of coal. That's I, potential for export. Are you suggesting that we should not even align? Are using it? Are you suggesting that we should not even align with this uh, global group that is trying to? Uh, do something about uh, this climate change? Do you think that we should stand alone and still do what we need to do to develop our country without having Ab to join the hands with them? Absolutely. All we need to do is that the way coal was used 100 years ago, while the mining started in Enugu for example, at Iba Valley, it's not the way coal should be used now. There are modern technologies in the use of those things. All we need to do is to adopt the modern technologies to ensure that the emissions and all these things are minimal. We adopt, you know, latest technologies to bring down this thing. What are we talking about? Well, it's only in Nigeria and some African countries we hear about pollution when you are, uh, when you are exploiting uh, uh, crude oil. In other places, you, have, you, you hardly hear of that. And there are technologies now that clean up the pollution. But because of the factor, Nigerian factor, we don't even clean up our own pollution. And who causes this pollution? The same uh, uh, America and Europe that you're telling us about uh, uh, clean energy. The other time they brought in fracking, another method of uh, exploiting, uh, exploiting uh, mineral resources down there, which is dangerous to the earth. Go to uh, the, the mining sites. Some of the mining sites in America are even coming up that were abandoned. And the most of some of them are. So, what we are saying is this we have to engage the global community with our interests first. Our interests first. Why are you telling me about the world? What has the world done for me? What has the world done for Nigeria? The world has come to exploit Nigeria family from, from the days of slavery. And there are these people telling you don't use your natural resources and they are using their own. The oil reserve, 
the full reserve of the United States of America is far more, I think, all the, all the reserve of the whole African uh, African continent altogether. So who will use the oil they are reserving? Have they closed down their own uh, uh, their own uh, company, the use of their own uh, fossil fuel? They have not. They are still using it maximally. So, and they are introducing little things like electric cars and it because they are producing and testing. But we are not producing on any of these things. And they want us to buy solar energy at a very exorbitant price. And they want us to buy other alternative energy at very exorbitant because they are producing it and pushing it down to us. So these things should stop. Nigeria should behave like India. Nigeria should behave like China. Because these are emerging global powers. And because they're not aligned with all these things. They are still producing with their fossil fuel. So all these talks, we should know how we can use... Uh, the latest technology and instrumentalities of AI and other technologies that are coming up now to see how we can minimize our uh, the dangers that you know emanate from. But telling me that uh, we should not use our fossil fuel that is dangerous, this and that is not what we should be involved in now. Let okay. us focus on industrial uh, revolution. Okay, so let's talk about the environmental hazard that this could pose. For instance, in Port Harcourt, we know about the suits, and this is coming from um, gas flaring. How do we mitigate all of this to ensure that the people are even safe if we don't apply these measures that are being um, advised to us by the experts? You know, it, it's because Nigeria is the way it is, actually. Uh, are you supposed to flare gas? Yeah, are we the only country that 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 that, uh, that, uh, that is uh, uh, exploiting and refining gas? Are we the only people that have food oil resources? Other places don't uh, they don't flare gas. Gas flaring is an anathema. Gas flaring is a thing of the past. For the past thirty years, many countries are not flaring gas. Gas, so those things are flaring. Actually, money that you can convert to other use. Mm. So it's only in Nigeria we flare gas. I don't know what's wrong with us as a as a country. All these suits. I I grew up in worry. So you don't need to tell me about suit. And my uniform was white and white. There's what we call acid rain those days when we were, when we were young boys. You, you, are, you are going, we call it acid because all your clothes, some of them will perforate your clothes. You have suit, you know, dots all over your, your school uniform. And some of them refuse to go away. Some of them will perforate. So I experienced it first time. And that is because there's glass, gas flaring. And who is flaring the gas? European country, uh, 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 the European uh, companies and American companies working in Niger Delta and in Nigeria. Why their countries are not even sanctioning them? If Nigeria even lacks the willpower to sanction them, which has been happening over the years, their own parent countries have not sanctioned them. So that's to show you the hypocrisy of all this narrative. Mm. It's hypocritical, and Africa should see through it and stop all these, uh, uh, you know, charade we call uh, uh, meetings. And then for us to go with over a thousand, one thousand four hundred and eleven delegates makes a uh, smacks of, uh, I mean, the hypocrisy of the whole thing, and it looks like people don't know what we are doing. Okay, what about uh, this argument that while they're talking about climate change on the one hand, they're also asking for funding for critical sectors of our economy that will help us uh, uh, fight this climate change and all that. So something is coming to Nigeria. That's part of the argument. What would you respond to that? We don't, we don't need to fight climate change. We don't we have what, what climate change do we have yet. We have white fires and we have... You see, when these people... I uh, have, you know, developed some narrative. We just buy it up, latch on it. That's why they told us that uh, uh, palm oil was not good, that it's have high level cholesterol. Only for them uh, to come back, back in, a, in a journal some years, some few years back to tell us it was an error. And so many other things. So we shouldn't be buying into all this narrative. All we need, we don't need it. We don't need funding for this thing. The funding, how does it come? It comes in, front of, in form of AIDS. So you pledge hundred million dollars to to help us cut uh, uh, aid our you know uh, clean energy reforms and the rest. Where did the energy come from? You supply us the uh, equipment. You supply us the machines. You supply the technology you have developed for that purpose, and then we are owing you. So that means we are buying. Look at Nigeria that cannot feed the citizens. It's talking about donating to a special fund by United Nations to do for climate change. Where can we come out from this full area? We can't even feed our citizens. Nigerians are dying daily. We can't even give 24 hours power supply. We can't even have good jobs. No good hospitals. We have uh, intellectual drain. Our professionals are leaving because we can't pay them. And then we, we go there to contribute funds or to ask them to bring funds for us. I, I don't know who did this to African leaders, actually. I, I, I don't know. But it's time to for the uh, people to really see through the line and save Africa. Mm.
Uh, well, comrade, would like to thank you so much for bearing your mind to us this morning. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, we've been talking with the Chairman, the Guild of Public Affairs Analyst of uh, Nigeria uh, in the person of uh, Comrade uh, Igboke. He was talking to us from Enugu State. Uh, this is where we are going to wrap it up on the show this morning. We do hope that you had a wonderful time uh, watching the program. Until we meet again tomorrow, my name is Kamgul Agaji. My name is Rumet Paulson. Have a good day.